outside is frightful. Boys. Oh, criminals. Have you witnessed the snowstorm that happened today? Well, I was in the thick uh, of the it sleet was last much eve. More than a snowstorm. Yeah, it was like hail, some snow, a little bit of rain. It was all all versions of water. At one point. <laughs> Just, <laughs> no, it was. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, it all was, water. It oh, was, a sleet catastrophe. Yep. It was ridiculous. And uh, that's how the Old Man Podcast starts here with the weather report. Oh, yeah. That's exactly how it starts. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's getting ready to be black metal season, boys. Yep. So we better get our sweaters steeds. and black metal. It's already black metal season as far as I'm concerned. Oh, well, well like, when true. is it not, though? I mean, it kind of skipped fall and this went to freezing for us. So, mm. you know. It could go back up though any minute. It could be next it, week. It could be in the seventies. It could be ninety, and we would be like, "Yeah, no, that's just how we." No, live. I mean that's that's climate change for you. It oscillates you until know? it fully hits in mid January and sticks around until fucking May. Uh, I mean, and then we're just black metal season with canoes. Ha! There yeah, it is. so true. Boom. Hello and welcome to the Kryptonaut Podcast. My name is Mark Stores, and with me, as always, is uh, uh, yeah, nice and. <laughs> Rob Morphy. Thank you all so very much for joining us and sitting through that weather report from the old crypto boys. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the man. old cryptid barrel. That's the only time that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, no yeah, shit. We're Probably. not doing that again. No. Oh. no. Unless, of course, next week when I'm like, well, geez, we got two feet of snow and, uh, oh, my feet are cold. Oh, yeah, my and socks are wet. Go. I don't know <laughs> yes, what to do. Exactly what I complain about because I'm 41 years oh, old. Oh, yeah. well, everyone hates wet socks. Oh, God, I know, but it is what it is. Thank you all again. Uh, the Patreon, patreon.com slash podcast. One is the shout out five is the shout out and the bonus audios robert we got some shout outs to do good sir fucking a right we do and i'm delighted and honored to be the one to say the names excellent beginning with b Hell yeah, a- as in bumble sans bumble <clears throat> Hell b. Yeah, b. nathan peterson oh thank you so very much nathan chesmir elazar koval we they were they were Kind enough to send us the pronunciation for this. I it didn't didn't take us eleven minutes to work on it. it. No, well, that was mostly me trying to fumble with the email that I sent it to you guys to make sure yeah. I didn't screw it up. So thank you so very much for your contribution. Absolutely, Josh McBride. Oh hell yeah, Josh! Thank you so much. There was a little debate about this one because I've not seen the spelling of it. Chris believes, and I think he's probably right, that our next patron, who's going to get an ultimate shout out, <laughs> Nikolai. Though I almost said Nikolay because it's not wrong. I, I don't know assumption, but I've never heard that. So we're going to go with Nikolai, and indeed, if it's a mispronunciation, Nikolai, you know where to go. All right, perfect. Matt Barkman. Yeah, what up, Bark Matt? at the Moon Man. Yep. Hell yeah. Hey yeah. Bark at the Moon. Tyler Smith. Thank you, Tyler. Amanda and Mark made well. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. Couple, oh, couple. How nice. I love couple listeners. Yeah. Chris R. Thank you, Chris. You got it. Kevin. Yeah, shit. Kevin Fisher. Hell yeah, Kevin. Brenna G. Yeah, Brenna. Mike S. Oh, oh S. Mike S. The Sinister One. Yes, thank Could you. Could be. Could be Mike Sinister. Special. Oh, Mike Sinister? That'd be pretty dope. That would be dope. <laughs> that actually is super be. cool. Like, one of my favorite Marvel <clears throat> villains was always Mr. Mr. Sinister. Sinister. Yeah. Like yeah. he gets slept on, but I'd love to see him be adapted appropriately. Oh, dude, that'd be fucking killer for sure. Well, you never know. I mean, now that the mouse controls everything, you never know. That yeah. might be actually be a possibility. Everything's so. carte blanche. And thank you to our patrons and everyone else who's listening. Yes. Thank you all so very much. We appreciate the continued support. And uh, this week, oh, I was super excited when I saw this email today because we're going back to something a little special, a little something near and dear to our hearts cryptids mm-hmm. it's we we had some alien pictures yes we had to take we had to take care of the alien pictures to get them out we had to, get, we had to properly suss them out your your ickles your moors there your you whatnots go. we did but now we're getting back to the bread and butter we're getting back to what the kryptonite podcast is named after the cryptids truly or quite possibly as people confuse it with cryptocurrency that's not also a money whole other thing though crypto other technically thing. just means hidden and therefore our ah. mission statement is broad spectrum but we all love monsters most the, i think yes. i definitely do sure. monster movies monster stories yeah. monster mayhem for life we are talking this week about the ultra cryptids the weird ones ultra cryptids Cryptozoological lore is littered with creatures that seem to defy classification, but even within this motley menagerie there exists critters so bizarre that they force us to shake our collective heads at their sheer strangeness and perplexing array of seemingly supernatural abilities that range from telekinesis, levitation, self-illumination, 
and armored skin. Welcome to the world of ultra cryptids. Booyah. This seems Snap. Like a, it should be like in a monster manual. It like really sure. should be. I mean, there's cryptids, and then there's that knee plus ultra motherfucking craziness that we love so much. And this is a pile of that, which is, you know, again, like you said, bread and butter. There it is. Mom's milk. Straight from the teat. Uh, no, you can keep that. <laughs> oh, well, you don't want the crypto teat, Chris? Too good for the crypto teat. You don't want the high strangeness juice? Well, I don't want my face? mom's crypto teat. <laughs> oh, well, okay. You gross bitches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're not talking about her mother's. Well, that's specific. what he said. Yeah, I know. I'm not gonna. Yes, all right, fine. All right, well, we're all gonna suckle from you. Chris's mom's then. crypto tea. <laughs> oh man. Oh, sorry, Marianne. Oh, uh, so your mom's an angel. She really is. Okay, well then you do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's gonna hear this and think differently. Oh. Okay, Robert, let's get started. <laughs> Our first case occurred near midnight, sometime in June of 1960, on a desolate stretch of road in rural Arizona. An unnamed woman, who was personal friends with legendary ufologist, author, director, and co-founder of the Aerial Phenomenon Research Organization, Coral Lorenzen, full-on oh, icon. Dude. Mm. Totally. This woman was behind the wheel of her Cadillac driving toward California while her husband and children slept in the car. Now, the ride was uneventful. They arrived a little late. They went to Denny's. Everything was fine. Was there a crypto teat? Oh, cool. See you next oh, week. Oh, there was a crypto teat. Oh, there was. Okay, yeah, good. no. Perfect. Of course. About 15 miles east of the tiny mining town of Globe, the woman was startled to see an odd three-foot-tall creature lurking on the right side of the road. The cautious mother quickly hit the brakes in case this varmint shot out in front of her car, but the Lilliputian loiterer just stood its ground, turning to face her as she crawled past it. The woman described how she felt at that moment, claiming, quote, The second I saw the thing, my heart came up into my mouth and my stomach did a flip-flop. Mm. Like, a, like a weird internal puke? Like when you yeah, puke, that, when that, you catch yeah, it? You know that. Yeah, yeah we all I know. That, that immediate feeling. Yeah, especially it's, like when you're in a bar and you're like, oh boy, <laughs> better get some water. <laughs> yeah, but all the worse when it's induced by shock or terror true. and not alcoholism. True, very true. According to the first-hand report given to Coral Lorenzen, the dwarf, as she referred to it, had wide-set shoulders, long arms, and seemed to have a coat of dark fur. Whoa. But far and away, its most distinctive attribute was its gargantuan head, which the eyewitness described as a, quote, flattened, globular, pumpkin-shaped head, complete with a pair of eerily luminous yellow-orange eyes. That's a big old head. That's mm. a big old head. Big that's old a, pumpkin noggin. That's a special spine to be able to hold such a... Head like that. Reinforced. Yeah. You need braces. Special hips. Ooh, maybe. You're gonna, Special you're hips. You're going to need something to keep Cryptid the hips. Crypt, yeah. It could be a double spine. It could be. Oh, the rare double spine. Yeah. Why not? Oh, I like well, I mean, it. you got to do something to support that kind of noggin. I okay. think Klingons have double spines. Do they? <gasps> do they? Oh, they? I think it was an episode of like, TNG. <laughs> like, Warp, Warp got all fucked up. They're like, you got a double spine, though. Really, That's really, really not a, a... He has a fucking two spines? Worst Beverly Crusher impression ever. <laughs> He's got I a double no spine, idea. though. <laughs> oh, flawless Like, what happened to your voice, Beverly? I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> it could be double spine. I don't know. All something. right, well, crazy. Nine hearts. They got all kinds of shit. <laughs> Three days. Interestingly, the woman made it clear that the eyes were not reflecting the car's headlights, but were emitting their own illumination. Mm. She swore that she saw a, quote, light beaming out beyond its face, end quote. Before the observer had a chance to know any additional details, the petite jack-o'-lantern-headed horror show suddenly turned and dashed into the thicket at the side of the road. The distraught driver immediately woke her husband and frantically told him what she'd seen. It's a dwarf with a pumpkin head. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, like, what, what the fuck? What the fuck? I mean, you gotta. Come on, Martha. Jesus You're Christ. driving, and everyone you love is around you, and they're sleeping, and then you see this shit all by yourself, and it's got flashlight eyes, yeah, and yeah. it's three feet tall, and it's furry-bodied and pumpkin-headed. You gotta be. You gotta tell somebody you Everyone, love. you gotta wake the entire car up. Kids, get outside and figure out what it is. Let Absolutely. Mom, let mom know. It's better than Goofy Golf. There you go. As uh, uh, Roy Neary, was that the character? Uh, Richard Dreyfus played in Close Encounters? Oh, yes. Yes. 
I think that was the character. Bursting with curiosity, the witness's husband insisted she go back so he could survey the scene and perhaps expose the bright identity. But she flat out refused, pressing down on the accelerator to put as much distance between the odd organism and her family as humanly possible. This case was written up by Lorenzen and published in Charles Bowen's excellent 1974 Compendium of Uncanny Encounters, The Humanoids, a book that whose virtues I've extolled many times. Totally. It's just a classic in you know, humanoid literature. But that having been said, quick in and out, really weird. Why? It's not, I mean, we've, we've heard about cryptids with glowing eyes galore. And yeah, a lot yeah, of times sure. we all speculate it's eye shine from headlights, flashlights, fucking campfires, whatever happens to be going on. But when something you, where you actually see when, when the creature was in profile, like the flashlight, like beams of light yeah, emitting. That's, yeah, that's a whole new level because that's where it's just like a part of your anatomy is a flashlight. Like how many lumens do you have in your eyes to fucking yeah. produce out? Like, exactly. that's a weird... So is it ultra bioluminescence? Is it um, a robotic head? Oh, um, I like robo head. Mm, that's yeah. kind of cool. You're right. I mean, you don't. You just don't know. And we're definitely going to deal with some other cases of creatures that are very likely not strictly speaking 100% biological. But in this case, all right. So if you're going to go for you know a hoax or something, why in the middle of the Arizona desert would you put on I guess a monkey suit? And it would have to be a child or a little person, right? Throw on a I guess a weird pumpkin shaped fucking head with two flashlights built in. Just so you can look at some random passerby and then duck behind the weeds and on the off chance that she's going to be best friends with like a famous ufologist and it'll go somewhere. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they did. Because <laughs> right, it happened. It, so it totally good, good job, person. Yeah, it totally worked. Yeah. I mean, maybe if it's just people playing hell, you know, skeptically speaking, if they're just like, yeah, we're going to do this and go fuck with people. I mean, maybe there ain't a lot of shit to do, you know, you're like, it's Arizona. Fuck it. Let's do this. Why not? I mean, you can't entirely rule that out, but that definitely would not be my go-to solution. It seems uh, like a hike to really try to fucking get it to there. But, yeah, Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming if it has eyes like that, they obviously must serve some sort of purpose, like you were saying, bioluminescence, whether it's for hunting or or, or whatever. I mean, behind behind the eye bioluminescence, I don't think it really exists, at least in anything known. No. no. But what an amazing trait that would be for, like, especially if you could, like, I don't know, shake your head vigorously if you were an owl and all right. of a sudden your eyes are fucking flashlights and you're nailing all the mice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, she also could be wrong about that. She could be. Yeah, I could mean, be. she's like, she swore that the light came. I mean, if it's if it's that fast when it's happening, maybe. I mean, she did slow down, but she never stopped, in all fairness. So Chris is right. There was, it was a constant motion forward. She did slow down. I imagine it was pitch black. I don't think it was a street lamp ridden back road back yeah. in you know 19 you know what whatever year it was um but but yeah, who knows yeah, know. you know it still could have been a mistake but anyway it's interesting yeah for real but weird as that sighting was an even odder encounter occurred in a remote tree shrouded gulch in the pueblo colorado area sometime in 1973 this utterly enigmatic entity which bears the technically incorrect moniker of the Wazooey man is known from a single scrap between two men and the monster that was recorded in Carol Marsh's intriguing, the hard to believe but true book of Colorado history, mystery, trivia, legend, lore, and more published in 1999. <laughs> Good lore. <laughs> That's like a fucking... It's a little laborious. You gotta make That's sure a... you cover all those. Yes, you do. That's a Barnes & Noble discount book if I've ever done some. I'm not saying that it ain't I'm, cool. I'm sure, I'm sure it's brilliant. I'm sure it's... A, I haven't I'm, read it. I'm sure it's an uh, excellently authored book, but uh, yeah, that's a lot. We got that... trivia lore. Like, all right, what else? All right. Things. Fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crypto teats. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's a lot. According to the report... A pair of unidentified teenage boys were fooling around with air pistols on the edge of a sun-parched creek when one of them noticed a pair of huge red eyes glaring at them from the tree line. Startled, one of the boys began firing BBs at the large crimson orbs. Yes. This, (laughs) not surprisingly, turned out to be a bad call. (laughs) Yeah, man. I mean, uh, you know, I don't think... 
You see the red eyes, you don't just start yeah, you shooting. Just don't start, you don't know what, could, what it could be. It could be something a lot, obviously. It could be a could hobo be. with reflectors, as we know. I'm glad you've grown through this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Old Mark would have been like, ah, you need all your guns. I How mean, many do you got? Get them all. <laughs> <laughs> call, call your grandfather get his guns too to be fair i haven't drank on a pod in, in quite some time and that that's tends true to, that tends to i i keep my guns holes yeah drinking mckill is definitely <laughs> drinking mckill mark yeah, is part of the issue those past pods are the reasons we, we stopped <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah i mean i you know i get it man you're a bunch of kids you got your air pistol you see some fucking red orbs you're like pow 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 bang 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 and you want to fucking do your best shit out there but but big red eyes. Yeah. It, so if it is something, a large animal. They? Like the size they're, of grapefruit. They're, they're big. Okay. I don't know. I don't know precisely. <laughs> well, you'll, we'll find out uh. more in a second. This is really one of the, my favorite cryptids. It's so fucking weird. But but I just, I don't see why that's your gut instinct. To shoot it? Yeah, it's kind of. Especially when all you're armed with are fucking BBs. Air, yeah, air fucking whatever. Uh, teens, guns. jerks. Yeah, and 73. Oh God! That's you know, the worst listening team. to Skinner down by the Gulch. I know. I'm surprised they didn't all have 44 Magnums. <laughs> yeah, really. Normally they, <laughs> they would just have shotguns. Like their parents are like, "Here, here's a fucking 12 gauge. Go enjoy. Don't shoot yeah, each other because no you'll, you'll kill each other." Yeah. Right. Well, fuck. Uh, squirrel hunting with a 357. <laughs> Without warning, <laughs> the teens suddenly found themselves being lifted into the air by a compelling unseen force before being hurled into the ravine. Stranger still, as one of the boys, presumably the one doing the shooting, was flung downward, he swore that a large wooden post inexplicably shot up from the ground, impacting against his head as he landed in a heap. Dude, these guys So not only are they psychically hucked down a hill, <laughs> but Rising. from another direction, flying lumber is coming right at your dome piece. <sighs> the Just fuck is like going this, on? Then. Like that. There's like a fucking magneto move. That is so much power. It is. Holy shit. All right. All right. Well. Stunned and terrified by this violent psychic attack, the teens sprinted back toward their parked pickup truck. To their mutual horror, the driver of said vehicle found that during their scary supernatural scrimmage, he had lost his keys. Now in full panic mode, the youths took off down the main road praying to stumble onto a vehicle that would pick them up and save them from their scarlet-eyed assailant. Alas, luck was not with them, and as they made their way down the rural road, they were unable to stop any passing motorists. Evidently, they lived westward of the site of their struggle, but every time the pair attempted to travel in that direction, they encountered a large, evidently spiny form resembling a, quote, Mobile haystack with two huge red eyes, end quote. Every time they would go to a certain direction, certain there's, direction. Just a, there's a mobile uh, They haystack. just went to a weird video game. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, seriously. Like, this is fucking ridiculously, well, here. This all-too-brief description is both fascinating and frustrating forcing one to ponder whether the odd beast resembled a thin, tall, shaggy blonde version of Adam's family's cousin It, or if it was more like an actual haystack, something akin to West Virginia's unbelievably wide-set creature known as the headless horror of Grafton, but with spiky protrusions rather than the moist, grail, gray, excuse me, seal-like skin that the headless horror had. Oh. So I can't help but imagine this thing as this unfathomably wide, maybe maybe quadrupedal, maybe its hair is dangling so far like a Sid and Marty Croft fucking puppet monster that you can't really tell, yeah, right. but it's got these bright eyes. I don't know if the hair or spikes or whatever they are are actually yellow or if it's silhouetted because, hmm. again, that's why it's frustrating and fascinating. All it is is a mobile fucking haystack with giant red eyes. A great way to describe it. <laughs> but if that's all you see now, though, is a fucking haystack. 100% that's all that's I hard, see now. Yeah, that's hard oh, to, if, if, to if, not see that. Similar color or whatnot. The eyes are pretty fucking weird, though. Yeah, definitely. It's strange. Whatever the creature's actual appearance may have been, its mere presence was enough to send the boys scurrying in the opposite direction. Unfortunately, this account ends there with zero explanation as to how they managed to escape from their preternatural pursuer, much less what their personal thoughts were regarding their run-in with this telekinetically endowed entity. 
nor were there any comments about the reactions of those they told about their harrowing ordeal or any mention of local legends regarding the red-eyed critter known as the Wazooey Man. Yet another frustrating dead end to what could have been a phenomenal case. And it really is. It's one of those wicked pisses. Yeah. I mean, okay, so skeptically speaking real quick. Okay. Uh, mobile haystack. Gotcha. There, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, or, real, that's all or, I can you really know, like, like a dune that's buggy it. with hay on it and, again, uh, two bicycle yeah. reflectors yeah. with, like, flashlights behind them. I like that you went to dune buggy. And I, these two guys are high. It's 73, dude. You're in the gulch, the Arroyo at fucking Pueblo, Colorado. You're going to dune buggy your way around. Singing bye bye Miss American Pie, fucking doing whatever the fuck you do. Oh yeah, that sounds about right. The eyes are interesting in this one because I mean the last one that we talked about, obviously having the illuminescent eyes. These things are just red. They're yes. just large, which you know I don't think would be eye shine because they didn't really have anything to shine off of it. And they, they didn't specifically say anything was glowing or anything yeah, like no. that. So it's just large red eyes. So all I see is this. It's almost like a, like. Like a early, like a Tom Baker era Doctor Who fucking like sloppy ass puppet that still freaks you the fuck out because you're young and, and it's creepy music and it's on PBS and the whole yeah. nine yards. Sure. This massive, like eight foot tall, seven foot wide, shaggy fuck all that might have like kind of like straw, like in a haystack, like little quills coming off mm-hmm. it instead of hair and these giant red fucking menacing eyes that are just staring at you. And when you shoot at it, it uses its sweet because its brain is fucking ginormous. All it is is <laughs> I, I uh, it's guess, a Moloch, yeah. I guess, <laughs> or Modoc. What, what, what am I Mo- trying yes, to say? Modoc, yes, yeah, Modoc. Too. I'm yep. fucking confusing with Morlocks, but fucking, it's this giant brain and what seems to be a giant head with. 450 little feet and that's how it's propelled like a centipede <laughs> but a centipede in a circle and then all the legs are fucking everywhere and and it uses its psychic skills and then i don't know blends into the fucking marsh when it you know it well, hibernates that, oh, for the next yeah. 75 years oh i like that angle that should have been put in the trivia book oh there it is yeah all right yeah. no that's uh I, I think the psychic attack here is the fun part oh 100 like, oh, guess what no if it was a haystack <laughs> with red eyes that part. chased them it's yeah. cool the fact that it chucks him down a hill and then has the extra i mean what kind of concentration it is it come out of the ground yeah when you're when you're chucking Pole. two people down with psychic skills i don't know what that's like i don't have telekinetic yeah, abilities no but i imagine that's difficult but then when you can further concentrate on that lumber down there to make sure it comes up and hits the dick that was shooting at you yeah at the same time god damn you're good that's carry level good Dude, it's all that big brain power right there buddy Oh, yeah. Keeping on that Look at big the big brain, brain on that haystack. Look <laughs> at that big old brain on that I, I, haystack. Yeah, I don't even know. All right, well, shit. There it is, man. I know. Fuck, I love it. thing is fucking gnarly. Fucking ultra cryptids. Fuck yeah, dude. Next level. Another curious encounter occurred in October of 1975 in the village of Rose, a civil parish in West Yorkshire, England, with a population of just 7,518 citizens, at least as of 2011. At, 4.05 p.m. on the day in question, two 12-year-old boys, Andrew Hammond and Paul Bennett, claimed to have seen a gonzo, almost 12-foot-tall, quote, robot-like monster, end quote, standing atop an embankment as they walked home from school. This is their account as relayed by ufologists Roger Hebb and Nigel Watson. Thankfully, Bennett took the time to record a thorough description of this bizarre beast in his personal journal. According to the young witness, the green-skinned creature bore a broad torso supported on extremely thin insectoid legs and plate-like feet. He described the creature's head as being round, oversized, and hairless with no discernible facial features. Hmm. Perhaps it was a helmet, or maybe even, again, a robotic head. Oh, shit. It's a pile of robotic heads. <laughs> robotic heads. Mm. So, Bennett claimed that he could only stare in amazed awe as the entity used its spindly, four foot long, fly like arms to scoop up handfuls of dirt, which it then inserted into peculiar pouches that seemed to be carved into its abdomen. Oh, that's the best. What the fuck story. is happening right now? Yeah, like dirt. long buggy dirt, legs. Dirt, 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 dirt holes dirt, in my belly. Dirt, dirt holes in my dirt, belly. Dirt, dirt. Okay. Chris, look. Dirt, dirt. No, I can dirt. see it out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want you to. I, I want you to lock eyes with me. I can't. Like, dirt, 
Dear, nothing? It's really weird, yeah, and I'm okay, not looking. I mean, if you're going to send like, <laughs> your, your bug robot to fucking collect dirt, you want holes in its torso. Dude, imagine, where it what, can people, store it. imagine what the folks on Mars must say about the shit we send up there. Some stupid looking fucking RC car. Yeah. And they're like, what wow. is that thing? Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, they're all douches. <laughs> it's amazing. And they know what RC cars are, which is even better. And they're yeah. disappointed that's the height of our technology. Exactly. Yeah. So then they send this fucking thing down. They're like, we need dirt samples. Dirt, oh, yeah. Dirt. Look, dirt, it's got it's legs, yeah. bug arms, holes in its torso. It seems complicated for a dirt sample. Fuck you guys and your RC fucking <laughs> rover. I mean, maybe it planted eggs and it's just collecting them or something. Oh, that's interesting. Ooh, creepy. Oh, and it, and it has to harvest and let them gestate in the yeah, now natural like, soil of Earth yeah. within its uh, marsupial-like so, wombs. Do they like splooge on the eggs and then bury them in Earth? Or yep. am I being dirty? Oh, are they asexual? Yeah, no, that's what they do, do they have that's eggs they and do. splooge? <laughs> do they splooge on their own eggs, bury them in the Earth, the natural native soil of Earth, which is so conducive to, you know, alien babies, yeah. and then you okay. come back when it's time for them to hatch and start gestating them in your abdominal cavities. I like the twist that we put on this. It's the it's health, you know, seventh grade health class. <laughs> we just learned all over again. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Ma- thank you, Mr. Messina. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, not tell me about a boner. I mean, don't. It's weird. Uh, oh yeah, no. Oh, not in front of her. She's. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I get boners. All right. <laughs> Indulging in what could have easily been a near suicidal impulse, Bennett decided to challenge the creature and his throwing arm by fucking shockingly. Chucking rocks at it. Fuck him. yeah, dude. Just like I said, return to form. Old school fucking kryptonite. Throw rocks Throw at Throw rocks shit. at it. Yeah, is it 12 foot tall? Holes all over its Don't torso. Matter. Bug arms. Fucking big round. No face head. This ain't your planet, dude. This is ours. Wow. Let's, let's throw rocks, dog. Yo. We got to do it. Yo, have your babies on Phobos. <laughs> yeah. All right? Phobos. This is Yorkshire, bitches. <laughs> Only reason I know about Phobos is because of Doom. I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah, fair enough. And the only reason I know it, I don't know shit. It's everyone's favorite Martian moon. Yeah, Come it's, on. Yeah, it's where the fucking the aliens and shit show up. Yeah. The fucking zombies from Doom, dog. Come on. The foolhardy kid noted that the few rocks that hit their target made a sharp pinging sound as if its epidermis were made of metal. You need bigger rocks. Mm. You, know, you need Nolan Ryan. <laughs> you need bullet rocks. <laughs> bullet and rocks. put them in guns <laughs> and then go. shoot them. To his great fortune, this massive metallic monstrosity ignored the youthful human's primitive assault and remained focused on collecting soil samples inside its various abdominal cavities. Bennett thought that he watched the thing for about two minutes before he turned to see if his school chum Hammond was seeing the same thing. But in the second it took him to glance at his friend, the entity, whatever it may have been, simply vanished. For his part, Hammond, quote, thought he saw something, end quote, out of the corner of his eye, but he was unsure exactly what. Is your boy throwing rocks at it? Yeah. You're, you're, you're like, like you're two like, full you're being, minutes, three minutes of staring at this thing? Hammond about what? this shit? Yeah, what, what is fucking like, oh, Hammond fucking doing? Know. It, probably being really high, like his friend. I don't know, man. Yeah, Hammond, yeah. Like, Hammond might not be. rocks at a fucking backhoe. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly something I would <laughs> I know, scooping up the dirt. It's it's just totally, a guy doing dude, his dude, did you see work? that? Dude, what, dude? I, could, I was I thinking about totally, fucking... Dude, I could see being at your apartment throwing rocks at the dumpster and being like, I fucking got it, Rob Wright. And he's just like, huh? Oh, and I'm boy. like, no, Chris, you saw it. You're like, huh? They landed. <laughs> what, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it was just the truck emptying the dumpster yeah. and put it back down. They They're fucking here. <laughs> Guys, run. Give me a rock. Rob, rock now. <laughs> Rob. Arm me. <laughs> It's gone. No, dude, it drove away. <laughs> yeah. It's garbage. Yeah. It disappeared. So, all, right. all right, man. So the, the kid witnesses this. His friend doesn't necessarily no, see it. No, he does not. That makes me think, though, of me. Well, yeah, it might be too early for the veil. I don't want to push my luck. No, do it. <laughs> dude, drop when the veil. When is it ever too early for the veil for you? Because <laughs> we're just working it back in, man. We're just I feel it like it's in. your breakfast. It's your yeah. lunch, it's your yeah. fucking dinner, yeah. it's your nighttime prayers, <laughs> yeah. your get up prayers. <laughs> wow. Yeah. My, my Sunday morning beers. It's your yeah. dead skunks. Oh, oh dead, boy. R.I.P. dead skunks. It's your All fucking right. rubbers yeah. in the water. Veil us, dude. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. If this kid is getting a glimpse into something that he necessarily shouldn't be. I wonder, though, if there was anything left over. Like, if they if, if they went through to be like, oh, yeah, no, the dirt was definitely fucking, like, you know, moved or anything. But yes. I don't think that was actually like no. I think so. I think I think that they went back and they didn't find a lot of signs. Maybe some divots in the dirt. Maybe the kid was high. 
Yeah. Could be. Just or, paranoid freaking out. Or like you say, he saw something that only he could see. Yeah. Or, and who knows? Like, it's the problem is, it's the thing is, I don't know, maybe like 100 feet away or so on a fucking bluff, whatever. Some yeah. mild peak somewhere. We don't know if it's tree lined. We don't know if uh, a right. Hammond was I like 100 yards fuck ahead, fucking around, looking at some snails, whatever fucking 12 year old kids do. And then his buddy calling back, like, dude, you see? And he ran back and he saw a flash of something, but he really didn't, but he wanted to be involved because it seemed like a cool thing, but he wasn't. It doesn't mean <laughs> that Bennett's lying. He just lost his confidence completely. Yeah, like, like, oh, oh it's God. awesome. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe. Oh, God, peer pressure. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, I mean, freaking out. you're 12 and your buddy sees a 12 foot tall fucking metallic robinoid. Right. Right. And fucking, uh, and you miss it, yeah, you will be forever kicking your dick. Yeah. You'll be yeah. like, well, God damn. Yeah, or you if, might if think you're that, not high and yes. remember that whole thing at might, all. <laughs> or maybe you might think that your friend might be fucking experiencing some shit here. Like, I don't know what the fuck's up with my boy here. Yeah, like all. a psychotic he's break. He's freaking the fuck out. An man. overdose. Uh, <laughs> overdose? <laughs> <laughs> it really, it, it wouldn't be weed. Well, I mean, if it was like a high strength edible, I don't think that. Well, I was talking about then. hallucinogens. Not yeah, that I, I mean, I don't know you're right. how prominent but. middle school usage of LSD was in you know Yorkshire, England back then. But uh, I mean, but I don't know it wasn't know. either. I mean, I mean, dude, think about it. Pink Floyd, The Wall. Think about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, about it. you're right. Yeah. You're absolutely dude, right. This is prime. It's like fucking Floyd. You're 75. Deep <laughs> yeah, dude. You're fucking just like, mountain, dude. dude. What's going on? UFO, right? UFO was back then? Sure. Doing prog rock and oh, shit. Oh, why, why not? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> fucking Black Sabbath coming out. Everything. Everyone's all fucked up. The there heel- is the chance that drugs were involved, but there's also the chance... That he just saw some he crazy shit. Something. I, and maybe he misinterpreted. Well, you don't misinterpret that. You're no. either lying, n- you're you're fucked up. Right. For some reason, either medically or or um, chemically, or you're actually experiencing a paranormal event. Maybe he mistook because, a tripod or something. Yeah, you know? could, I mean, like, you can laugh. Both. You can laugh at the backhoe thing. Well, you, he could mistake <laughs> it. Easily be high as fuck and something just if happened to happen. Yeah, you're right. If you're on the well, right like, drugs, <laughs> then yes. <laughs> something happened. But that to no. me still fits under the the heading of drugs. So it's either a lie, uh, some sort of like say medical or chemical issue, or a paranormal thing. Because right. if he's just normal, straight walking by, sees this, you know, you don't just see that no. and not have one of those things be happening. You don't mistake, you know, a fucking, I don't know, a tree squirrel or whatever for a twelve foot tall fuck all throwing dirt in its gut. I would hope not. I, mean, I hope those but... babies were born on a distant planet and they're doing well today. Here's hoping. Yeah. Those, ba- those baby backhoes. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> little baby. You know, when aliens come here to fuck our backhoes, <laughs> they make the cutest just, babies. Just imagine that. You just see this big, t- tall fucking robot thing just railing just a backhoe. Just hammering the tailpipe. And you're like, dude, no, it's new. Fucking no. stop. Oh, we didn't even break the, the resale value. We didn't even break the bucket in yet. Come on. God damn oh, it. Oh, my. And things just fucking crushing the backhoe. Break the bucket. God damn it. Son of a bitch. All right, Robert. Continue. Yeah, on. definitely. <laughs> Moving the fuck on. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by my bookie Charles. What day is Thursday? Thanksgiving. Yes, and that means football. This year, Turkey Day at my bookie gives you plenty of reasons to be thankful. Starting with a $250 risk free bet on Thursday afternoon when the Dallas Cowboys host the Las Vegas Raiders. Bet the spread between the Raiders and the Cowboys at MyBookie. When you win, you win. And if you don't, MyBookie will refund you up to $250. Simply put, you can't lose this bet. And that's what I call... All risk, no gravy. All risk and no gravy? I meant to say no risk, all gravy. That's right. No risk and all gravy. Before you get your wager in, set yourself up for success by doubling your first deposit when using our promo code Hell or Space at MyBookie, and that's promo code Hell or Space, all one word, to double your initial deposit all the way up to one thousand dollars. Bet anything, anything, anywhere, anywhere anytime with, with MyBookie. My Just seven months later, on the afternoon of May 17th, 1976, a group of four children from the Sablon School had apparently wandered away from their teacher and classmates while on a field trip to a duck pond in 
Powassi, a western suburb of Paris in north central France. Needless to say, I will murder all the French words I try to say. Yeah, I'm so confused at where we are right now. All right, so just think of it as in France. a slightly rural suburb of Paris. French fries. Okay. Rural is strong. <laughs> it's a suburb <laughs> with like a park. Okay. You know? In you know, Paris. Do you know what a suburb is? In France. <laughs> How dare France. you? No, I don't. <laughs> in, look, what are, what's happening? It's in a suburb North in France. Central fucking France. <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's French. Like, no, good. I don't it's a fucking what suburb that means in a duck is. pond. <laughs> That's all French words. I don't mm-hmm. know what that means. You just boomered out big time. I did. Totally. <laughs> Where am I? I have no idea. Do we'll we'll summer in Pawasi <laughs> next year. We'll all enjoy the duck pond. Everything Where am will come I? correct. I don't know what this is. It's France. How dare you? What are these things? <laughs> My grandpa fought for this Duck land. Pond. Duck How dare you? Barely say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. The middle school children were wandering near the pool when one of them spotted an incomprehensible entity that appeared to be floating just above the ground a little ways away. Jesus? Possibly. Okay. He's cool. gonna he's gonna be different than your classic religious description. Sweet. The kid stared in disbelief as this over six foot tall Jesus. Yeah, still, so we're far, still good with he Jesus. Was, he yep. was tall. Being appeared to glide over the ground with uncanny alacrity. Its legs hidden in the high grass, apparently immobile, its arms extended in front of its body, bent slightly at the elbow joint like a mildly injured Frankenstein's monster. Maybe the Undertaker. But all right. Okay. So I mean, Jesus or the Undertaker? He's got a robe, so you never really see anyway. Jesus or the Undertaker? There it is. The stunned students described the creature as being covered in a pellage of black hair that partially covered its ash gray epidermis. Maybe Jesus? <laughs> Dude, ash gray epidermis. Who had the ash gray suit that was purple? Undertaker. Mm. Yeah. But as odd as its mangy coat may have been, it was the thing's head that really caught their attention. According to their report, this floating fiend had a small, rounded, violet-hued skull that was smothered in wrinkles, but, much like the pouch-bellied robo-bug of Rose, it had no other recognizable features. In fact, it had no face at all. Oh, that's a, a small, wrinkly purple skull. Yes. <laughs> now imagine <laughs> okay. skin stretched tight <laughs> over a tiny Chris, skull. Chris's face is a fucking and, price. And then it's all fucking not <laughs> like, botoxed up. It's wrinkly as shit. <laughs> it's so weird. So a rounded, right. it's like a weird skull raisin. shape. Yeah, it's like with, a strange raisin. I guess it saran is. wrap yeah. wrapped on it, but then like bunched up in certain places. I, I guess presumably where facial features ought to have been, yeah, or maybe yeah, not. Um, it could have been just wrap around mummy wrinkles, uh, okay. like uh, Pascagoula. I don't yeah. know. Uh, uh, there you go. Oh, okay. Well, weird fucking uh, problematic head. Face free in 93. Yeah. Whew. God, get your shit together. The tweens stared at the hovering horror with what must have been a synthesis of fear and awe when they suddenly realized that it was haloed by a quote-unquote transparent light that shimmered like heat waves over a sun-baked stretch of asphalt. Back to Jesus? Back to Jesus. Back yeah, to Jesus. there it is. Look, I guess it is. This proved to be the final straw, and the panicky pupils ran back to retrieve their teacher. Unfortunately, by the time they returned, the faceless freak of nature was nowhere to be seen, and the teacher could find no trace of the buoyant beast. Intriguingly, the students always referred to it as he, which seems to imply that they noticed male genitalia. Oh, they showed the kids that's a so fucking illegal. It's like a weird gray skin, mangy black haired monkey well, body. Maybe it just had a frame that was a little more. Nah, I man, I, I think they saw the genitalia. No, I don't you, want. You them. would go there. I don't want them to. Looking I didn't for go dicks. there. Rob wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> Looking. Oh yeah. Now it's my fault. Yeah. Rob wrote it. The kids saw the fucking Listen, dick. I, I don't want to see it. You're looking for dicks, not me, it? buddy. Oh, no, look for the dick. I'm presenting facts <laughs> that involve dicks, possibly. <laughs> Dude, this thing is definitely. A this sex. thing is like a this dingy a sex offender, like for a, sure. Like a dingy ape with like a ball sack on its head, just a wrinkly, circly oh, ball sack yeah. of a skull head, and it, and and it's floating it's around like a fucking like a wannabe savior, like some weird fucking robo ape, maybe. Maybe. Hence the genitalia. Yeah. Yeah, I think no one sees that coming. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! You don't. I don't know. This so the everyone's, everything ball usually has the big head, chip. but this has a small head. This it's one has re- a small head. This is the reverse. Yeah. yeah, yeah you're I don't right. reverse Uno. I don't like, like it. Like, and the one we just dealt with, the 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 rose pocket bug, whatever it fucking is, that had a big rounded head. No right. wrinkles. Yeah. And 
obviously the first pumpkin head it's a big rounded head with illuminated eyes and no mention of nose or mouth so all three cases could be helmets yeah they could be could yeah. be yeah. weird fucking faces of creatures that just were not you know did not originate on earth um or oh shit i don't know i mean it, I, I just don't I, know. I, I don't know either. I mean, I guess those are the options. It's it's a it's a helmet, a robot head, or you know your fucked up face, or lack thereof. Right. All right. Sure. This case was brought to prominence in issue 157 of Lumières de la Nuit, the bi-monthly French ufology review created in 1958 by Raymond Vailith, published in the uh, month of August September 1976. It's worth noting that the journal mentioned that, quote, traces of what may have been the landing of a flying saucer, end quote, were discovered at the scene. Hmm. Woefully, specifics regarding said traces evidently weren't recorded. Oh, ah, yeah. so Son of a bitch. It's of just course, another here we go. classic here case. A little fuck. anecdote of like, yeah. oh, yeah, oh. No. well, there was traces. It could have been, what, what is it, like a traces. little divot in the ground? A tiny triangle Busted in the gravel? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> A folded leaf. <laughs> Clearly a landed craft. Little backhoe babies over here acting up. Jesus Or Christ. was it a proper, like, swirl of grass yeah. that, you know, you could be like, oh, shit. Yeah. Right. Somebody like saw three the... circle burn marks or right. some shit. Or like... someone actually saw it land and was like, oh, shit, it's a UFO. We should talk about that. We should document that. Right. It didn't happen. It did not. Well, it did, but Bitch. they didn't document it in the good All way. Right. Well, it was just eventually told to some... French ufology rag, which I mean, not rag, it's in the Steam magazine, but you know what I mean. So, I don't know, like, sack head monkey Christ is a fucking weird you cryptid. Know, yeah. Uh, and the fact that it wasn't walking, like, they didn't see its feet, but it was, you can was tell floating, when something's yeah. walking. When when something has that awkward slip through gate, like, like in any Chinese horror film where they're clearly on some sort of dolly, right. and they have their long, flowing, gorgeous robes, yeah, but it still looks eerie as the dills. Yeah, yeah. totally. If you ever see that in real life, and I, you know, I don't, I never have. I hope I never do. I never have either. It will fuck you up. Oh, for sure. You can't come back from that. That's it. Not healthily. Game over. Game up. O- <laughs> fucking Bill Paxton. There it is. Game over, man. I don't know. Maybe it's game on. Oh, could be. Oh, that that kickstarts your fucking crusade against these these sons of bitches. I want to learn how to do it. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. All right. No, I want to that, follow him. Like, dude, guy. I want. I, I, I want. To, I've always wanted to do that. Right, I like it. I like it. F- float. <laughs> 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 Chris will work on floating. No doubt. In the meantime, Robert, please yeah. continue. Yeah, and, and it's interesting, too, that so far these things, uh, two have just vanished, essentially. I yeah. mean, I mean, yeah, they're there, and then they're just fucking not. Floating monkey could have had a chance to disappear. Could have j- The yeah, haystack yeah. thing went into the woods. Uh, pumpkin head ran into shrubs of some sort. Yeah. Um, but... Big Bug just was gone yeah, in a flash. Yeah, said see you later. That was and, and this guy, not maybe the same flash, but still pretty quick. So, again, it makes it hard to... I mean, they are ultra cryptids. Yeah. But in no way, shape, or form are they indigenous fauna. No. I don't think so. No. no this okay. could be some interdimensional shit, boys. So, this is going to be our last case, and it's a little scummy, and I like that. One of the most unnerving accounts in the Chronicles of Paranormal Lore concerns an encounter that took place at roughly 11 p.m. near Essendon, France, maybe I said that right, on August 28, 1960. On the night in question, a married couple, Mr. and Mrs. Plumazil, were cruising past a walnut tree-ridden slope on a rural road that ran between La Prodelli and Aen when they suddenly spied a brilliant reddish-violet light ascending up above the tree line. At first, Mr. P. was convinced that the object was at a distance, but when it began to rise above the trees, he realized that it was no more than 300 feet away. And as it was described, I I might not have done justice, just this like hazy orb, basically, or sort of an amorphous shape. I don't know if it was specifically Hmm. a circle, but it's just this ball of plasmatic reddish-violet light. Right. Wanting to get a better look, he hit the brakes, skidding to a halt. And that's when the couple noticed something strange writhing under the glare of their headlights in a ditch just off the right side of the road, not far from their idling vehicle. The following quotes come from UFO investigator and author Joel Mesnard's article, The Things of Isidon, published in the December 1974 issue of the esteemed Flying Saucer Review. 
The couple stared in revulsion at a slippery, undulating, grayish-brown mass that looked, quote, like a sack of potatoes that seemed to be collapsing in on itself, end yeah. quote. Oh, it's gross. gross. Yeah, no, it's, this thing is awful. Every description of these <laughs> fucking things are disgusting. Kind of like, the, like almost like the, the Domston blob. Oh, 100%. Like Sweden, yeah, the yeah. Flying jelly bags. Yeah, but this thing's like prolapsing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's gross. It's gross. Prolapsed jelly bags. <laughs> it's gross. Uh, it's gross. And, and a little bit like um, uh, Kinderhook, oh, well, maybe. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it but, but a, much more disgusting. A seagull with a sheet. Yeah, that's right. So as I further describe this, you'll realize that it's it's not like this gorgeous, brilliant, white, schmooey blob thing. It's, it's a scum fuck. But the nearly three foot long amorphous blob wasn't the only animate object on the road that night. Quote, there were a number of smaller, similar masses, light brown in color, like potatoes with globular protuberances, which moved by contractions like a person in a sack. Oh, it's so gross. And quote, They're like maggots. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, you, you, this, like suck maggots. Yes. Oh, suck maggots. It gets better. <laughs> These smaller, (laughs) rugby ball-sized versions of the first organism evidently moved like, quote, an animal trapped in a transparent plastic you bag. Got, like a rugby unquote. ball. So it's like Ugh. it's like uh I don't know, like an unborn monster fetus in its in its fucking like amniotic oh, sack. Yeah, I didn't uh, think about that. Dude, mixed a, with a fucking maggot, uh, as you guys were saying. Dude, it's a kickening. It's yeah, you, you got oh, yeah. it's oh, a no. kickening. No, I mean I'm a, you know I'm a legendary kicker of things. <laughs> yeah, the, I don't know if I want to kick that. I, yeah, no, Come on, man. No, you're gonna get that on your boots. No, I I, you know I, I need you on the front line with your kicking ability. Th- that's a stickening. You you have to have at least three four yeah, feet that's away. That's a you're asking for it in ink. <laughs> <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna eat your fucking kicking a puff ball. I mean, you, you know the result. <laughs> Kicking fucking Megatron 4000, you don't know what's going to happen. No, it's going to explode. You're going to kick it, and it's going to be like this fragile conglomeration of pus and organs, and it's going to fucking shoot all over you, and some of it's going to get in your goddamn mouth, and you're going to fucking be ruined. But you guys have the bravery to kick things that you don't know should be kicked. Not non-organic. Yeah, I'm not kicking living things. I don't know, man. I think this is is where you guys shine. This is where you shine. Oh, they're fun guy. Yeah. Uh, this that, is this is like your D Day, honestly. No, this You're is gonna liberate. This shit is right a pokening. Here. This is not yeah, a pokening. We kick animals Never. or things that are living think, like I this. I don't know what this thing is. Yeah, I don't go around seeing a frog like boom. Oh, oh yeah, no. right. Come on, not a terrestrial no, animal. No, we kick boxes identify. and snow. <laughs> yes, and puffballs. That's all we said we kick. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Always <laughs> those like, three. Yeah. I think the kickening thing is a Patreon reference, if I'm not wrong, right? It's okay, though. Check it out. Patreon.com slash Crypto Podcast. <laughs> Good true. luck finding that All episode. All that for that plug. It's oh, somewhere yeah. in there. <laughs> oh, well, I love to kick shit. The pair was unsure what they were looking at. Were they wounded animals or some inordinately large larvae? Were they even alive? The fact that these greasy, throbbing globs of wriggling flesh were moving with purpose seemed to be a clear indicator that these things, whatever their origin, were definitely animate. They have no purpose. And the closer they got, the more they looked like massive maggots. Oh, yep, see, there it is. Know. Just came out, man, just giant maggots. Ugh. Yeah, sometimes I, I read an article uh, by, I think, oh, uh, Brett Swanser, maybe? On Mysterious Universe, and he did something on this too. I got this from the original uh, source, but mm-hmm. um, and he called them like the Yasidon maggots, no. like literally just That's, called it that. Yeah, and, right, he, and, okay. he, and it's not, it's apt. Yeah. Okay. Weird space. Yeah. Good larvae. call. Okay. Weird. Fuck. Okay. The husband would go on to tell Mesnard, "Quote: They were all over the place, down below the road. The place was just swarming with them." We might easily have run one over, run over one of them. End quote. His wife, for her part, seemed to think that these creatures were quote trying, perhaps awkwardly, to escape from the car and hide behind the bank on the left side of the road. End quote. So her interpretation is, it's like a migrating group of these things. There's the big three foot long okay, super yeah. maggot. Then there's all these potato like scum fucks that are still looking like. I don't know, like fetal chickens trapped in rotisserie bags. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> made of used condoms covered in mayonnaise. Really? Fucking really? I mean, I'm just okay. trying to paint a picture All right. here. All right. No, That's you... what I do. I paint pictures. <laughs> you, you 
painted quite the picture. Yeah, I'm just not yeah, even thinking about that. Condoms, <laughs> mayonnaise, and fetal chickens. Come on. Yeah. We've all thought about these things <laughs> together. It's, it's, uh, moving in the road. God, it's like going to fucking Golden Corral. Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, uh, so okay. I don't go there. Oh, God. R.I.P. Well, it's, it opened again in case anyone was wondering. But, I don't even care. All right. Anyway. Just as two of the slimy grubs managed to make it across the road, the luminescent purplish mass that was hovering above abruptly extinguished, immersing the family in a suffocating darkness. The Plamazils reached their limit and decided to get the hell out of there before any more aerial anomalies showed up, or worse yet, they accidentally picked up a slimy stowaway. Mr. P claimed that he tried to avoid running any of the pulsating pupae over while beating his hasty retreat and believed that he was successful. Let's hope he's right, because it would be a shame if an intergalactic incident were caused by slapdash driving skills that turned an interstellar ambassador into a pulpy mess of roadkill. Oh, you shot the messenger. You I did. feel like you sent the wrong thing to Earth if you just sent maggots. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think you did. No, no. If that, well, but then again, maybe it's going to turn into something like super good looking, like a like a tall blonde swimming athlete slash centaur or something. Well, but, why not but wait? It's in the, it's in the <laughs> larval phase. <laughs> why, why like not? no one expected. He wasn't. They weren't expecting to run anybody. The ship just landed. The orb just shit him out. And fucking, they're crawling across the road trying to find some water supply. Or maybe they're just looking for a big green bug to put them in this body cavity so they can gestate. But fucking, oh, yeah, mix the, it up. Mix the eggs it, I don't think so. Mix I think the that, cryptophores. That purple yeah. thing was probably a fucking, like, a flare. They're like, oh, we fucked up. They got out. <laughs> <laughs> there they go. We f- Enjoy your maggots, Earth. <laughs> Chris's, wow. Chris's explanation of we fucked up. No, I love they it. They got out. It's, it's totally like Night of <laughs> the Creeps or no, Critters. That's exactly the shit. This yeah. story is it's, that, for it's sure. It's Critters, for sure. And they even have that weird thing. Remember with the fucking Bounty Hunter dudes and they got that weird face and they become fucking, what's his name there? Yeah. Generic yeah. rock star yeah, generic and every other dude rock in the town. dude. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but is All this right, thing, man. I mean, it's a UFO because it's unidentified and it's like, but is it, is it organic? Is it the mother figure of these crawling maggot things? Is it um, watching them? Is it just an interested party? Is it a Ugh. will-o'-the-wisp? That watched an alien come down and piss its little maggot babies all over the fucking French countryside. And now it's like, hey, I'm a metaphysical being and this is my land. I was here first. I was here before the people. People are kind of dicks, but they're also kind of my dicks. So fuck you guys. What are you doing throwing maggots on my planet? And maybe the preternatural creatures of France are fucking dueling with the aliens trying to invade. Or probably not. I'm just uh, saying yeah, there are yeah. options here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. There's a Roman lot. candle. <laughs> or Roman candle. Yeah. Road flare. Uh. Uh, all right. Hold on. We, got, we, we have a horse fetus and a fucking failed ground display. How's that? Oh. No, you like that? Always a failed ground Hell display. Yeah. Always. That is, that's literally. It's been a while. <laughs> second only to diabetes, our great go to. Yeah. <laughs> failed it's, ground it's display. Definitely in the top five. What is that? Is it Elzalia? Elzalia no. Elzada? Elzada anomalies. Yeah. 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 That was a great one. <laughs> okay. So it's a shit show. I don't know what the light means. I don't know what these fucking maggoty things are. Nothing, no bugs get that big. No. So, assuming, like, just going for the most rational explanation, it's like, okay, these are the pupa, the larval phase of, of some sort of insect. But rugby ball sized things that are like 11 to 12, I mean, I, I looked up the measurements, they're like 11 by 24 in circumference. Oh, wow. Um, that's fucking big. The three yeah. foot yeah. long one. Yeah, it, you're, it is a horse fetus in a fucking really, yeah. in a used invisible yeah, no, gym bag. I'm, I'm not in. Oh god. So if they are creatures that are going to transform, what the fuck are they going to turn into? I don't. Is that know. how where the Mothmen come from? Oh, are these the Mothmen's uh, little tiny babies? Well, I mean, you got to start in... at some phase. You got to become a, a moth a pillar. But they're in France, so Cat- Catterman. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> What's the protocol for being in France? Maybe in Europe, breeding in Europe. Ground. They're like, in France. Like salmon go to their traditional breeding ground. You know, Mothman turtles, they, sea turtles do. Okay, maybe they do. Why can't okay. mothmen go to the traditional breeding grounds of fucking France? The French uh, moth, mountains or moth, whatever. Moth, okay. Mothman and pe- moth folks can do what they need to and do. And maybe the owlmen go well, there and maybe they occasionally interbreed, though it's frowned upon by their oh, families because they're conservative, dude. even though they should be a little more progressive because love is love. Yeah, totally. Owl moth love is They're legitimate fucking, love. That's how you make yourself a fucking owl man right there, baby. Fuck yeah. That's how you do it. It's fucked up. It is. I love it. 
the, the, this is one of the few ones that we dealt with that they didn't have necessarily preternatural powers. But this weird confluence of the the glowing orb and just the sheer repugnance yeah. of the fucking the, the thing. The orb I almost forgot about for a second. Yeah. Once it went to the maggots, I I completely forgot that. Oh, there me was, too. There was a, a, a firework in the yeah. beginning. But, but funnily yeah. enough, that's <laughs> how oh, we're yeah. seeing it. So to. everything on this roadside is yeah, bathed in this eerie really purplish weird. violet glow. And you're just seeing these oh. going across the road, and then a pile of little baby potato fucking maggots following. Oh, that would make more sense that it was a flare if they got out from some sort of secret thing. Oh, like a government experiment yes. gone awry. It oh. makes way more oh, sense. And the, oh, That's and why it went a fucking way after a while. That make, it goes yeah. up, it illuminates. So something like, did like, escape, but it wasn't from... <laughs> Mr. P thinks it's a, a UFO at a distance, then realize, oh, it's just lifting up from the tree line, and it's no. only about 300 feet away. Why? Because it's a flare it's that a was shot up flare. from the trees. Because the government agents that are looking for these things, sure, they got their high-powered flashlights, but once they see headlights, they can't make themselves known. No. They already shot up the flare, so maybe it's their way of actually illuminating the road so that yeah. their precious military experiment doesn't get run down by like a, 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 a couple that literally own a pottery export business, which is what they did own, and, and they didn't want them to fuck up their ultimate weapon, the one that really ended the, the Cold ultimate War. ultimate maggots. The <laughs> ultimate maggots that ultimate. <laughs> that convinced yeah, Gorbachev dude. to tear down that motherfucking wall. Yeah. The real heroes of the war. The real <laughs> yeah. heroes of the Cold War. It was not Reagan. How dare you? Wow. It was the ultra maggots. Muffman had a vision. There you go. <laughs> Anyhow. All right. Oh, well. Crucifix fans, unite. Oh, okay. Shit. The above cases are just a handful of the usually brief, often dodgy, and always bizarre encounters that exist on the fringes of more mainstream fields of paranormal investigation like ufology, cryptozoology, and even parapsychology. Whether these creatures are cryptids, aliens, demons, fae, ultra-terrestrials, or interdimensional interlopers, they remain among the most engrossing entities in Fortiana and challenge both skeptics and believers alike to pioneer untested experimental modes of thought that push their intellectual and perceptual boundaries into at times uncomfortable realms, sometimes asinine, that, while undeniably eccentric, are endlessly fascinating and almost always worth exploring. So if you're driving down a back road, taking a walk in your own neighborhood, or just hanging out near a random metropolitan duck pond that Mark won't duck understand, pond, Mark. <laughs> keep your eyes peeled. Because despite popular notions, the most incredible paranatural encounters are rarely reserved for Himalayan plateaus, highland locks, or, de or desert-bound military bases. More often than not, the absolutely strangest, most mind-bending encounters can be found in your own backyard. So stay vigilant, keep an open mind, and do your best not to accidentally kill our new alien overlords. Oh, shit. There it is. The ultra do cryptids, it. the weird ones. Mm -hmm. This shit is the stuff that I personally love. Oh, it's, it's gold. Don't get me wrong. Bigfoot's fascinating. Not really. Yeah, no, he's got I, his place. I, whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. It's fine. But the super fucking, the super weird shit, stuff that. like this. That's like, it mixes, it, like, like you said, it, it brings in the ufological aspect. You get a little bit of crypto, but it's really super weird, high strangeness stuff. That yes. just makes zero sense. It's the best of the best. Zero. I love it. It's fun. I agree. It's awesome. It's so good. It's the least explicable and yet somehow the most fascinating because, yeah. again, just on the tiniest chance that even one of these happened in sort of the way it was reported. What do you do with the, it? What the fuck? Exactly. You, what, can't, you can't do anything That just it. shifts the nature of reality fun fundamentally. Yeah. It's not like finding an unknown primate, fascinating and great, or like a <sighs> an unknown aquatic animal. Again, <sighs> wonderful. You know? Or even a UFO, and it's like, oh, it's technology from another planet, and they are carbon-based or silicon-based, whatever, and they came here to explore the same way we, we, you know, we send rovers to Mars. All of that is fascinating and mind-boggling, but sort of prosaic. This shit's like, are do you live here? Are you from a parallel Earth? As I as yeah. I know, I talk about all the time. Like, are you from this alternate version of here? And so this is as much your home as it is ours. And yet, when you see us, you're like. The fuck is wrong? What are those things on their face? 
oh, <laughs> holes and globby orbs. The fuck is wrong with this yeah. species? They're not even floating. Their dick's not hanging out. Where's their body hair? <laughs> There's not even a condom wrapped around their head. Fuck these dudes. Like, they probably think we're just as fucked and ugly. They probably, yeah, I'm sure they do. They probably see us as just awful, awful beings like we see them. So, yeah, it's it's one of those things where, like, if if you are dealing with something that is in our existence and only maybe a few people can actually perceive it being the few people that do perceive it what do you where do you go with that yeah that's when true you're the one that you're like oh this is what i saw like like the kids i mean hammond obviously didn't care he was just like yeah whatever i don't give a shit about the you know the the alien right but up bennett the old, was balls the deep. Old dirt yeah like when you actually experience something like that i mean that must put you on a whole new level of just either like paranoia I guess it's really just paranoia and fear. Well, sure. And you're not going to be like, my life's better for this and get all excited about it. You're going to be don't like, think no, most I, saw, people I would. saw some crazy stuff and it's going to screw me. What's funny is that the way I want to see these things is I still want to be empirical and I want to think that Bennett got lucky and Hammond didn't or maybe vice versa, actually. Right. But either way, like I want to think that if it's visible to one, it's visible to all. It is, uh, it, even though it's an unnatural part of this world, it's still something that is explicable by some kind of science, even if we don't have a full handle on it yet. That's what I want to believe. But what you're saying is actually probably just as likely to be true, that it is a matter of perception of, of maybe like some string theory fucking subconscious level bullshit where some people fucking have the gene and can see it and some people just fucking don't. And if that's the case and you're one of those people, God damn. I've got mad empathy. I'm not it saying that sucks. I 100% believe that that's what's going on, but I'm willing to entertain that notion. And if you just can see what other people can't, then you're forever going to be ostracized and marginalized because of it. And you're going to have a hard time dealing with it, and you're going to have no way of understanding the experience. Or maybe yeah. just, you know, you happen to have a one-time, one-off thing where you just saw this awful nightmarish thing, and you're like, well, that exists in our reality somehow, so now i got to move on with my life. Right. Like, ugh, God, it's well, just awful. Maybe, or maybe it doesn't. It's true. Maybe it doesn't. Either if he, if they can see, well, this thing was clearly somehow manifested because if he threw a rock at it and it hit it, are then, you ta you're talking about the the, uh, the, the bug, bug backhoe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. backhoe bugman, B bug ho, bug ho. <laughs> <laughs> like that thing clearly I, was there if it hit it. Yeah, no, it pinged. Yeah, if, you, if it didn't yeah. off, of it, so yeah. there's that. Yeah, Chris, uh, why don't you close this out here? Ultra maggots. What do you think? What do you got? That's fucking Put weird, man. Put it on man. the table, buddy. Put it on the table. Well, Ultra I mean, maggots. maggots. I mean, we have maggots. We they're, do. They're we real. Do. Th not saying that's exactly what they were, but that's exactly what they sound like by reading the sure. account. Uh, and you, and obviously, others agree with you. There's yeah. Totally. I, there's not any that big that we know of. No. We hope that they're not that big. Unless there's like some. Well, they're obviously I've not, not seen any They're not take. sea creatures. <laughs> what are those fucking horrible, oh, yeah. horrible creatures that like eat whale carcasses? And uh, they were mm. part of Godzilla in 1985, Chris. Remember, they're like legitimate big, like yeah, bug, the sea bugs that eat like massive carcasses, and they're nightmares. Oh, those are real. Oh, 100 percent, they're real. Oh, I didn't know that. I think the movie The Bay, that like uh, found footage film of oh, people yeah. drinking like water parasites, was based on these creatures too. I'm, I'm ashamed oh. of myself. Is that like those beetly? Yeah, go, go, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking Arthropods about. Arthropods or uh, isopods? Are they isopods? I think you, they might be isopods. <sighs> anyway, I didn't just big, scary-looking beetle things, right? The horror shows. Right. Now, things like that can live in the ocean. Well, because it's it's massive and it has the kind of food, and and and, and you don't need to deal with gravity. The land doesn't usually support that shit, and you'd think we'd know about it if it did. So, with the maggots specifically, they are either. Um, from another level of existence, they literally did fall out of a UFO. They escaped from a government lab where the fucking that seems, the flare bearing I'm, I'm fucking like agents. Of, I might go of, that one. The <laughs> Suarte <laughs> were trying to find them it, because it has the it has the most things that could could be real. Also, it would make the best right? movie. True. Be, yeah, True. it would absolutely like secret government shit's real. Maggots are real. Totally. Flares are real. <laughs> yeah, it's not, you know, like <laughs> it's completely true. It's like a Dean Koontz novel from well, the eighties. Well, that's what I mean. Oh, it's like, like that, uh, that could have been the thing he wrote right after like Watchers or Twilight Eyes, oh, where the, you know the, the, the sack monkeys that are like in their larval form when they come out, they don't turn into bugs. They're like these half primate monstrosities, like Watchers or yeah. whatever. Oh, and God, uh, that's awesome. And and they just and the government needs to find them before they get out and. Needless to say, they're, they don't get there in time. But this tiny village in fucking France is turned into a nightmarish hellscape, uh, surrounded by like 
the barricades of the government. And of course, the twisted, corrupt uh, officials are like, yeah, we can't really do anything about it. And we don't want to kill our super weapon because, of course, it's going to end the Cold War. So they're leaving the town to die. And the people inside the village have to figure out how to survive when the government's only containing them, not helping them. Right. Oh, I do like the mess, dude. Yeah. Yeah, dude. You got to kill the kid. That Does, sounds, is that where the kid died? It's, yeah. oh, it's, it's still awful. Oh. A bomber. Gross. Gr- yeah. Grubulon. Sucks. Yeah. All right, man. Well, sometimes you got to kill the maggot, right? Sometimes you got to kick the maggot. <laughs> You're right, Mark. Just, yeah. You were right all along. I would like to follow up yeah. on this. Steel toed boots. Uh, wear, wear some waders. I'm still, I'm still not kicking kick it. Kick the maggot. But... Yeah, you got to. Dude, I got sewer boots for everybody. We can put our sewer boots on. You can just kick them. Bam. But I've go. seen enough I mean, bad you... horror films to know the deal. You go in there, you, you rear back for a good kick, and it's going to have all of a sudden a mouthful of fucking snaggly ass teeth, and it's going to be ripping through your ankle, and you're fucked. Yeah. It's, it's probably made of complete ass. Completely. Oh, it probably explodes dude. on you, and then you're a skeleton. Oh, my God. It's got acid for blood, like xenomorphs. Oh, they explode. Why would they not? Oh, my God. Yeah. We're going no, to write right. this movie. Acid's real. Acid's a thing. And acid? Blood, <laughs> blood, <laughs> blood's blood's yeah. a thing, too. I've never <laughs> seen anyone be more excited. Oh, my God. Right. <laughs> acid's real. Acid's real. It is true. <laughs> Like, that wasn't even in the story, but... Oh, my God, dude. Do we, do we, are the subjects we deal with so esoteric that you just get that happy with something that's fucking evidential? Yeah, yeah dude. You got, you, it's when real. You, when you, it's real. When you put Space it all, maggots, I don't know. When you Acid. Put it, dude, when you put it all together, dude, you take the real shit, you compile it, and there you go, man. You're right. It's a fucking thing, dude. All right, so... It uh, is. Blood's a thing, too. So you just slowly kick it into a fire. <laughs> like, it'll just roll into a fire. And... Just roll. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, yeah. you like, come here, come here, maggot. Psst, oh. psst, psst. And then fucking <laughs> it's a cat. kick it in the fire. Roll it in the fire. <laughs> kick in the fire. Oh. oh come on. Come on. Oh shit. There you have it. Thank y'all so very much for joining us for the Kryptonite Podcast. Oh geez, how do we do this again? Heller Space, Robert. We got it t-shirts. Is. We got shit for sale. The store is on sale all this month. We got November. some awesome shirts coming out too yep, in the next month shirts. or so. We got some shit happening there. We got uh, some um, uh, some Black Friday stuff happening too. So be sure to check that out. Two exclusive designs, social medias. We're there. We're doing it. The Instas and the Twitters and the Facebooks. What up, the Facebook fan group? What up? Thank you to everyone over there supporting that. Hell Word. yeah! Patreon is the thing that we offer to everyone, and those who want to accept it can accept it. <laughs> yes, they can. <laughs> Why those who want to accept it? <laughs> by, by and we encourage up. this. We encourage you to sign up at uh, patreon.com slash podcast. One dollar is a shout out and one bonus audio. Four dollars. No, I'm sorry. Five dollars. Jesus Christ. Wow. That's a weird tier. Five dollars is the uh, no more than four bonus audios in the shout oh, out. Yeah, but that's a lot. Except when it's five. Because this month. We broke the, the cardinal we, rule. We did. It's the okay. solemn oath was betrayed. It was, yes. We, we, there we were broke, five Patreon we, episodes. We broke the oath. Wow. I think I, again. It. But we did <laughs> it in a good way. I think it's actually six. <gasps> it might, six? Sh- don't, Jesus don't, I, I, Christ. I, I thought that went, oh, I maybe. actually, I got a chance Are to talk. Are we not prolific? I got a chance to talk with our buddy Todd. Oh, oh yeah, that's, did, right. that's right. It was super fun. And, Amazing. Uh, and uh, and thank you to Todd actually for sitting down and talking to of me. Of course, like that. It's great a, dude, was, talented. Like, he's dude, he's such a sweetheart. He's such a good dude, and he was so cool that actually I proposed to like, hey man, this is a Patreon thing with just you and I. I'm not going to Mark Marin you. We're just going to talk about stuff, and he carried the entire conversation. Oh, that's God. great. Oh, work. Yeah, because he's fucking awesome. So thank you, Todd. Check him out at CreateMagicStudios.com. Uh, also, too, the Patreon gets you access to the Discord. You, whether you are the $1 or the $5, be sure to get on the Discord because we have a bunch of shit coming up there. Mm-hmm. There's actually the mods over there did this super cool thing where they made like, or they, they incorporate an event calendar. So, like, the, obviously, by the time this comes out, we've already done our movie night, but all the events are going to be on a calendar over there, so you can actually go and check it out and, like, RSVP if you want to. Oh, yeah, you're so, definitely going to have to keep dang. me abreast of this shit. Yeah, so that's all super cool. And thank you to everyone, all of our listeners out there that support us, whether it's Patreon or not. Uh, we've really, like, been hitting a nice, pretty high point with the show, actually. Yeah, definitely. We're able now to get sponsors, which is super cool because that helps us as a business and it helps us that this is how, you know, everyone here sort of it offsets their living costs. Or, oh, like, 100%. In, in Chris's, uh, position it, it, it's his full time job. Right? It is so yeah. So and th- thank you to everyone that supports us in the adventure. Yeah, we, you we know I can't it. I can't buy the crazy old ship shitty pulp paperbacks that have like floating dick apes and condom yeah. heads <laughs> without your help. <laughs> yeah. Right. So thank you. Yeah. No. Thank you all for your continued support. And uh, yeah, come back next week. We're gonna have some fun stuff, and we're we'll talking to you soon. Goodbye. So long. I'm not gonna do. Sound of music again. Dude, you were getting oh, right. I? Oh, you know what I want to do? Sound of music. I want to sing some Tapau.
a little so, bit of heart and soul. Oh. You guys want to go with me? Oh. Do you, do, you, do, you remember, do, you remember yeah. how, do you remember how it begins, though? I don't. Right. Wasn't it? I, I can only think of the chorus in my head. Da, 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 da. I day, looking to see something on your thigh. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> looking to see up. something this on your is, thigh? This, this is, is the politics of love, baby. I don't know. Give a little bit of heart and soul. <laughs> yeah, that's all. I was yes, waiting for that. There yeah. it is. That's the part that we and all I love know. Tapal because it seems like it's a character, a Romulan character from like Next Generation. <laughs> like I always Christ. wondered where they got. Oh God, oh, God bless '80s pop. Shit, that's one yeah. and all. Oh, there it is. We're talking to you soon. Bear. <laughs>